Okay guys, so uh, today we will talk about chapter number three. Uh, chapter three is about internet and uh, specifically today we're going to talk about history and definition of internet. Uh, we'll discuss different types of internet connections with which one can get, for example, DSL cable, fiber optics, cellular radio, etc, etc. So these are the two main things that we're going to discuss today. This is basically the uh, part one and the part two will be discussed uh, in the in the next class in the next video which is about the difference between web and internet and some attributes of web uh, so let's start with the definition of internet and then I'll give you the uh, uh, the historical background of internet so first thing is internet in order to understand the definition of internet firstly we need to start with intranet and what is the intranet intranet the definition is network within organization or within home it is also known as LAN local area network and what is that so basically a network within organization or within the same building is called intranet for example let's say at your home you guys have this access point and with this access point, you have some defined, well-defined coverage area uh, that might be your home. And your devices are basically connected with this access point. You might have a cell phone, you might have a laptop or computer. All these are basically connected with this access point. So this small network is called intranet. Okay. Uh, so network within organization or within a building is called intranet. If it would be organization, then there would be a server and all these devices are connected with the server. Um, the next level of internet is extranet. Extranet, it connects two or multiple networks. So it connects two or more networks. For example, let's say, uh, let's say this is your campus number one, for example, or office location one. You have a small network here, server and some computers are connected with that. And you have connected second location Okay, where you have another intranet or another local area network. So this, this particular network where we have two or more intranet, it is called extranet. So what is intra intranet then? Internet is basically network of network of interconnected computer networks. So network of interconnected computer network is called internet. Uh, so or you, you can say if you connect all extranet across the globe, it will become internet. Okay. So internet is basically a big network where you have plenty of networks connected with you know each other and you can access their web pages and all that stuff. So this is basically what the internet is and just imagine how big internet is going to be like if you connect all extranet across the globe, then it will become internet. So basically how this uh, the idea of internet actually came in. The idea of internet is basically this concept was emerged back in 1950 during Cold War uh, when United States Department of Defense, they were developing a radar system and uh, they just want to connect the radar systems with each other. That's basically how the concept of interconnecting uh, interconnectivity came in. So basically the concept of interconnectivity of computational system was emerged in 1950 during the Cold War when Department of Defense DOD developed radar system to detect possible nuclear attacks during that time these nuclear weapons use of these nuclear weapons were very common at that time so uh, so basically what they did is department of defense they actually uh, deployed all these radar systems were deployed at multiple 
locations and are connected with each other using a technology which is called SAGE. SAGE stands for Semi-Automatic Ground E for Environment. Okay, and SAGE was basically developed during Cold War. Please remember that. So it was developed during Cold War. That's an important question. Um, and now the thing is how these radar systems were connected with each other. If you see down here, let's say this is basically one radar which is deployed in Texas. Let's say this is another radar which might be deployed in Mississippi, for example. This is maybe deployed in Alabama. This is maybe deployed in Georgia and stuff like that. All these radar systems are connected, you know, something like that with the same uh, in a ring. Let's say Georgia is basically connected with the Florida's radar. radar excuse me and then uh, for example maybe New York something like that okay so this particular connectivity a ring connectivity is basically using a sage sage technology which is basically connected all together but there was a problem and the problem was that for example if there is attack if an attack destroys too many locations for example if this attack destroys this location this radar and for example this particular radar okay and let's say this radar as well now the thing is, do you think Texas, if they detect anything, can they communicate to Alabama? They do can they can communicate with New York, but can they communicate with Alabama? Of course not. That was the problem. So if an attack destroys too many locations, so what will happen? It will uh, fail the whole network. So that was basically problem. So let me write down if an attack destroys too many stations, too many radars, then it may fail the whole network. So whole network may be failed. So that was basically the ultimate challenge. Uh, then a new concept called packet switching. It came in. Uh, scientist, his name was Professor Paul Barron. He was basically a German scientist, Professor Paul Barron. He actually uh, introduced the concept of introduced the concept of packet switching. And what was basically packet switching? Packet switching is basically you need to break. Let's say you have uh, 100 bits to transmit. So what you need to do is you need to actually divide them into 10 bit, 10 bit packets. So divide them into small packets, 10 bits, 10 bits packets. Okay. And then each packet will have uh, the destination address and the source address. Each packet has this information. So now what will happen if too, uh, too many locations are destroyed, then the, the station that is that actually fails or destroyed, it can be bypassed. But again, still the problem was not uh, not resolved since uh, if an attack destroys too many locations, still this particular technique might not work. But that's a very cool concept of breaking down the data in a small packet. So uh, other party, while destruction, while you know the attack was uh, attack uh, attack was being executed, so the other party they can still get some uh, some of the blips or some of the bits. That's basically a cool idea. We still use uh, we do use this packet switching concept. Uh, then the ARPANET. It, it came in and this is basically what uh, some people they call it the earlier form of internet. ARPANET is basically um, uh, it's the again initiative of Department of Defense and it stands for Advanced Research Project Agency Network. So ARPANET is Advanced Research Project Agency Network. And uh, in back in 1969, Department of Defense, they hired a professor, Professor J.C.R. Licklider. So they hired this professor and asked him, you need to connect four universities network. So let's say, because this, uh, 
the project of this detection of nuclear attacks it was uh, it was really a, it was a top secret kind of mission so they, they they didn't want to disclose the information about the radar or application of this research so they asked professor jc alitlider to connect four universities network okay so you have to connect these four universities network in such a way if one or two network if they fail to work other stations or other networks they they may continue to work that was the challenge so professor jc alitlider he actually made his own team he teamed up with two people dr leonard dr leonard and uh, paul baron paul baron the guy who uh, introduced the concept of uh, packet switching so they actually uh, you know discovered or you can say what they actually came up with they actually came up with the idea of peer to peer networking peer to peer networking which is basically today's internet like just bring diversity like multiple connections should actually come out uh, from different or from from individual computers so that's basically what internet form is today uh then the isp isp stands for internet service provider internet service provider and in order to access internet one has to get connection from isp so to access internet one has to get connection from local isp uh another way to search for the isp is searching for internet so if you search for internet you can actually search the isp eventually so searching for internet in your area is an efficient way to search isp so different isps uh, they offer different connection but uh, there are five main uh, common connections that you can actually get one is dsl digital subscriber line we'll talk about it second is the most widely used is cable and that's basically what might be at your home the most common most common and you can say might be at your home third is the um, fiber optics fiber optic system the fourth one is the satellite and the fifth one is cellular like what the AT&T and all these companies Verizon they actually offer so let's um, before i actually go to um, the internet connection like how, what dsl works and all that firstly uh, there are a few considerations that you need to uh need to take before you make uh, or before you choose any isp number one the first is because your the internet or you can say the speed that you actually get uh via cable or fiber optics it's basically shared so for example if uh, at&t claims you can get 50 mbps it doesn't mean that you will get the dedicated 50 mbps it will be shared with your subdivision or you know the resident of your subdivision or the people having the same connection in your area so you need to actually make uh, three uh, considerations mainly firstly is uh, you have right to ask how many users will be logged in logged on on my network at same time secondly you need to see will users be streaming data like watching netflix and all that stuff streaming data and then what isp choices available in my network and then you can actually pick any of the isp next is the very important term uh, regarding internet which is called ip address IP address, internet protocol address, IP address is basically, uh, you can say it's the unique ID of the devices and uh, the devices are identified over internet through the IP address. So devices are identified 
over internet with IP addresses. So firstly, I mean, if you don't have IP address, you cannot access anything over internet. So over internet, IP address is just like the name of your device, okay? Um, who assigned this IP address? Assigned by ISP. So your internet service provider will assign you IP address. It's basically your network identifier. Identifier. And uh, ISP has blocks of IP addresses. So please remember one thing. Um, if you have two laptops or two devices at your home connected with the same uh, uh, same uh, you can say uh, access point so they actually share the same public IP address I, I repeat if you have two or three devices let's say if you have two or three devices three devices connected with the same access point so you will have one all these devices will share one public IP address you can see that all you have to do is just uh, open your browser and type what is my IP address dot com so if you open this particular website it will show your IP address like how publicly your device looks like uh, you can actually try on on your different devices which are connected with the same I uh, same access point and you will see all these devices will share the same IP address so please uh, remember that too because ISP assign you one IP address per device per access point not uh, the uh, unique IP address to all the devices so two laptops or two computers two laptops or computers connected to same home network and surfing the web simultaneously share same IP address publicly so let's come to the uh, internet connection types the first type of connection is DSL which is outdated uh, it's not basically I mean it's it's kind of obsolete nowadays so DSL is basically it stands for digital subscriber line and it uses your traditional local landline or telephone telephone lines to transmit internet signals internet signals um, so the best thing about DSL is the speed is consistent consistent internet speed so speed is very slow the maximum speed is 2 mbps that's one can get with dsl so you will cons get the consistent internet speed uh, but consistently slow why is uh, the consistent speed because uh, your landline connections are not shared with your nearby uh, neighborhood or the, the same subscriber in fact second is the cable cable or you can say coaxial cable in fact and it has more bandwidth than DSL. We will discuss cable in detail in our networking chapter. So more bandwidth than DSL and uh, uh, it usually it is it is bundled with TV. So cable TV is basically the same thing in fact and it uses coaxial cable a specific kind of cable to transmit the internet signal next is the fiber optics uh, please remember one thing whenever you see the word fiber optics so please remember fiber optic is the fastest home network option internet option if available okay uh, but it's not available in all areas all areas 
and please remember there is very less or no electromagnetic interference because signals are carried by light waves light waves so it's less subject to electromagnetic interference uh, the next is the satellite internet uh, satellite internet the one that you use uh, on planes and on ships and all that so satellite internet it uses microwave signals and you can say it's the broadband service everywhere okay covers uh, the uh, you can say the whole group uh, but again with satellite internet you can get the limited data plans so most of the data plans are limited not unlimited data plans next is the cellular internet service uh, cellular internet service they actually use the cell phone or you can say cell phone radio waves to transmit internet signals so it uses cell phone radio waves to transmit and receive internet signals Um, again, uh, of course, you, you do have the uh, unlimited plan offer, but those are expensive. So basically, most of the companies, they offer limited data plans for uploading and downloading. Uploading and downloading. So the data plans are usually uh, limited, uh, even though they are they do offer unlimited data plan, but with a star, with a star, like it's not technically fully unlimited. So, like uh, if if you have an unlimited data plan offered by a cellular company, it might be three hundred GB of downloading volume. In fact, um, other than that, you can actually turn your smartphone into hotspot. So that's another capability. Like smartphones can send and receive Wi-Fi signals Wi-Fi signals which allowing them to become hotspot so you can actually make them hotspot uh, and you can connect other devices with your smartphone uh, last few things some technical terms one is the ping uh, ping is basically it's basically a command which uh, network administrator they actually use to test and troubleshoot the connectivity of devices so ping is basically to troubleshoot to troubleshoot and test connectivity of computer with other systems On internet so if you want to test um, if you want to just see the ping command how exactly it works you need to open your command prompt what what you need to do is just hit the Windows button at the bottom this is the Windows button and type CMD command prompt and then you need to open the command prompt open up just type ping and you can enter any website like www google.com ggc.edu and you can send a ping packet and see whether the website is up or not uh, there are there are a few uh, other terminologies uh, one is uploading uploading is basically if you send a file from your computer to a server over internet so sending files from your computer to a server that is called uploading examples are basically posting a photo on Facebook posting a photo on Facebook Instagram placing an ad on Craigslist uh, 
uh, posting a video on YouTube. These are basically examples of uploading. Uh, then downloading is basically if you if you actually copy something on your device like for example copying a photo from Facebook uh, copying a driver maybe from website buying a song from iTunes so you can actually uh, you want to listen the song um, in an offline mode as well streaming is basically the last thing for today streaming is basically watching or listening a file on internet without saving on your computer without saving a file on a local computer okay uh, examples are like for example watching movie on Netflix uh, watching movie or video on YouTube listening music on Pandora Uh, so that's it for today. Uh, if you guys have any question issues, please do let me know. Uh, we can discuss that in over online class.